Is it working? I don't know. I can't see. That's better. Hello, guys, and welcome to this little tutorial in which I will show you how you can animate a little faster, a little more efficient. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're animating just bolts, like I do, or if you're animating a proper character, so like Jimmy in my setup video. It will pretty much help you anytime animating stuff, yeah, especially when you're working with replacement animations, which I do. Uh, in my case, I'm replacing eyes. Just eyes, that's it, pretty much. Um, yeah, and I'm going to show you how to do that a little more efficient. Uh, what I'm going to show you is how you can use a box like this, in this case it's a null object, uh, to animate the eyes, so to move the eyes and, and make them transparent, where is it, there it is, uh, and all that stuff. And how you can make, you know, how to, you can give the impression of a head turn on a 2D object. It's not that simple, at least for me it wasn't very simple because I can't think, apparently. <laughs> but I will show you how to give that impression. And to do that, we're gonna create a new folder. And yes, it's bad hair day for me. It's Sunday, and Sunday is usually a bad hair day for me. Deal with it. So, what I just did, uh, I used the PSD file because I created all of my bolts <laughs> in Photoshop and I imported that into the tutorial folder, so over here, and a little box pops up, says, do you want to import it as a composition retain layer size? Yes, we want that. And we want to have the editable layer styles. Then you hit OK and there it is. What that did, uh, it imported the single layer of that Photoshop file and created a composition for you already. And you want to double tap that with your mouse. And there you go, there's your layer, um, your Photoshop layer, and that's it. And now we need our eyes, obviously. I have imported them previously. I won't use all of the eyes now in this tutorial. Let's say I want to use the sad eyes and the angry eyes probably, and the normal angry eyes. So those four are a pair of eyes. And you want to put them above the ball, so above the background object. And I also like to put my normal eyes at the very bottom. And what you're going to do now is you make all of them invisible. So you can only see your normal eyes because they will give your, uh, you the orientation for the, um, for the proportions. And you highlight that layer. You hit S on your keyboard. That will bring up the scaling option for that object, in this case for the normal eyes, and you want to rescale them a little. Uh, now it's totally up to you what you like. Uh, so the the scaling and how big they should be, that's totally up to you. You can make them that big if you want. Doesn't make sense, but you could do that. I want to have them 46%. Yeah, that's all right. I think I keep it like that. Very important step now, um, before we do the scaling with all the other eyes, uh, you want to move the anchor points somewhere or somewhat into the middle of that, those eyes. So somewhere into the middle of those two eyes. Um, I will explain in a second why. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we don't do that for one pair of eyes. So you will see what I mean or why that's necessary. And I won't bother you with all the scaling right now. Um, so I'll probably do a time map. map. Um, is that alright? Oh, that's a little too small. Let's make it a little bigger. Okay. Looks somewhat alright. Um, obviously you need to invest some more time in it than I did right now. Uh, and you want to do the anchor point again. Okay. Pro tip from me. Um, I like the normal eyes. And then use guides. To mark the position of that anchor point. How to use guides? Uh, you just hit control. R on your keyboard and that will bring up that thing I've forgotten the name of in English and when you hover with the mouse above it and then just click and drag down then you will get a guide and as you can see uh, we have marked our anchor point right now of those normal eyes and we're gonna do that and we're gonna move the anchor point of those normal angry eyes to the very same position and now I do the timer map Okay, so we have done the scaling for each pair of eyes. We have moved the anchor point to the middle, apart of the anchor point of the sad eyes. We're not going to move that because then you will see why why it is so necessary to do that. Why it is so necessary to align all of the anchor points of every single pair of eyes to the very same position. You're gonna see that. So the angry eyes, anchor point is in the middle. Normal angry eyes, anchor point is in the middle. Normal eyes, anchor point is in the middle. 
And what you want to do now is you want to click on the on the empty space, right click on it, then click on new and create a null object. Um, that null object will be the controller. And you want to move that into the middle too. And then press Y to move the anchor point and you want to move the anchor point to the middle where all of the other anchor points are. Cool. Next up you want to, or you probably want to rename it. We're going to call it I controller. And what we need to do now, you click on the I controller, press P on your keyboard and then shift R to bring up the position and rotation propositions uh, or, or information or whatever you want to call it. And you're going to do the very same for the eyes again. However, there's an additional step needed for the eyes because you need to go to, over to the stopwatch, click Alt and then click on it on both of, of them. What that will do, it will bring up the expressions um, of those propositions. So the expression of the position and the expression of the rotation. And now you want to pick it, pick whip it, I'm sorry, to the rotation of the eye controller and do the very same for the position. However, then you're going to pick whip it to the position of the non object, obviously. And that's it. We're done. Um, okay, we're going to do that in a second. And you're going to do that for all of them. I just time remap it. Time remap end, <laughs> or end of time remap. Because now we want to do the very same for the uh, uh, sad eyes. Um, but we haven't moved the anchor point, have we? We left it where it was, which was over there. Okay, I'm now going to pick with the rotation to the eye controller, nothing happens. However, if I pick with the position to the eye controller, <gasps> they move. And they are a little off now, so they are not centered anymore, and they are at a little different position than we wanted actually, or where we, we didn't want it to be. So that's the very important thing, um, why you have to have the anchor point at, of each eye at the very same position, because um, at the end of the day, they will move off a little. The position, so After Effects uses the anchor point um, to do the animations. So it will animate from the anchor point to the anchor point and the position is saved in that anchor point. So obviously when you pick with the um, position to the position of the eye controller, it will use the anchor point to orient itself and then move the anchor point to the anchor point of the null object. So that they align and they do that right now. However, that means our sad eyes are a little off. To fix it, uh, fix that, you just click on the sad eyes, move the anchor point into the middle, and then pick whip it to the position and boom, nothing happens. Perfect. That's what we want. Cool. What I like to do now is I like to resize my null object or my controller a little to make it usable, a bit better usable or a little easier to use. So it's a little bigger. That's it. It's just, you don't need to do that. It's just me. Um, next up, very important. You want to use an expression controller. Express so expressions can be controlled um, in some way. Uh, we're going to use a slide controller um, those express you can find them in effects and presets and then expression controls and you want to use the slider control um, it's, expression controls are necessary or useful in this case they're not useful for everything but in this case they are so you put that slider control onto the null object or onto the eye controller and that's pretty much what it is a slider from zero to a hundred and you could you, you know you can um, Rescript that so you can tell it that it will go from 0 to 1000, but in our case 0 to 100 is perfectly fine That's exactly what we need. Next up you want to recall or rename it. I'm sorry, and let's call it normalize There you go And then you want to bring up the opacity option for the normalize I make all of the eyes invisible so we can only see our normalize so you highlight it press T for transparency in this case it will bring up the opacity yeah, that's a smart step. And then you click on the little arrow here on the eye controller, click on effects, normalize, and there it is. There's our slide control, which you can see up here too. Now the very same, you cl click on alt, hit the stopwatch next to opacity, and pick with it to the slider. <gasps> they disappear. Oh my god, what, what happened? Where is it? <laughs> there they are. So we can now control the opacity or the transparency of the normalize with this controller. Cool, huh? And you obviously want to do that with all of the eyes. So transparency, transparency, transparency. How many do we need? Four. Four. Okay. So one.
Alright, so if you are still here with me, um, you can now see that we can control our the transparency of our eyes from up here. And the cool thing about it is uh, you don't have keyframes on each separate layer anymore. You only have your keyframes on one layer. That's very important and that's very efficient. It's better to have the least amount or the smallest amount of keyframes. And in this case, we do that. We only have keyframes on one layer and also a much smaller amount, which is cool. Next up, you want to click on toggle switches and you want to use a transparency mask. What that does is it makes an object when it moves off the background object transparent. It's a pretty neat technique and I like to use that recently. And as you can see, so I have turned that transparency mask on. If you move your eyes over here, they get, they get transparent. Pretty cool, in my opinion, pretty cool. Because then you can give the viewer the impression of a head turn. Because obviously, right now you only see this, which is my right eye. You can only see my right eye. And if I move my head over here, you can see only my left eye. But in the middle, from, from here to here, you see both eyes. And you can do that kind of, or you give the viewer that impression. Because now you see only the right eye. And the head turn, and now you only see the left eye. That's the whole impression of a head turn. It's very simple, probably not the best idea. There are definitely better options to do that, but it's it's usable. And to make that, you know, the, to fine tune that or to make it look a little better, because now you can, as you can see, the the outer ring, so the the uh, the circle, the black circle, is invisible now because obviously all the eyes are above the background object, and they hide that circle. It doesn't look too good. What I like to do is I like to use the circle um, and put it above all of the eyes. That's, by the way, the outer circle, but with a transparent uh, center. So there's no color in it, it's just the circle. And I like to put that above everything. And now I need to parent it to my ball. And when I do the eye movement again, you can see the black circle is still there, in my opinion, like looks a little better. And you still have the impression of a head turn. That's all that is. Cool. So what do we do next? We have done the transparency mask. We have done the uh, slide controls. We have done the position and, and rotation controls. Yeah, I think we are pretty much done. Um, some fine tuning steps now. Uh, you want to lock the circle and all of the eyes. Because uh, if you lock them, you can't accident you can accidentally click on them, but you can't move them nothing happens. So when you click on it, nothing happens. They don't move at all. And I also want to lock the background object. So as you can see, I can't do anything with it. Nothing is happening. But when I click on the null object, it gets highlighted and I can work with it. <clears throat> That's why you want to lock it. Um, to clean out your workspace a little, go to toggle switches again and turn on the, uh, the shy switch. That's the little tree icon. In my opinion, that looks like a tree. And you're going to turn that on by just clicking on it. And then up here, you click on it as well, and they are all hidden. It's just to tidy up your workspace. It's better to have a tidy workspace. It just takes a lot of stress off you. And now you can work with it. That's all that is. That's my secret. <laughs> and that technique hopefully will help me to make animations a little faster in the future, because now I managed to do only one per week because of work and stuff. Not too good, but hopefully there will be more and quicker animations in the future. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, I've used that technique as example in the Jimmy composition or in the Jimmy animation because you, we had uh, a puppet. A puppet, and we'll get to that in the future. A puppet is a point which you can animate. And we have one on the hand, one on the elbow, and one on the shoulder. And obviously you have to have keyframes for each one of them, which is again not efficient because you want to have the smallest amount of keyframes. So what we used we, uh, was a controller on his hand, which was connected to a bone and the bone was connecting all three of those puppets. And then you only had to animate the controller and once again you had only keyframes on one object. In this case the controller on the hand, which makes it a bit more efficient and easier to work with. And After Effects is doing all of the impressions, uh, interpretations for the arm movement, so uh, sorry for the elbow movement. It's just more efficient, it's a little easier and you, it, it takes a lot of uh, frustration and stress off you. Only the, you know, the, when you prepare it, it, that's a bit time consuming, but at the end of the day that will help a lot. So that's it. I hope I didn't bore you too much and I hope I will see you again in the future and I hope you did enjoy it and 
Hopefully it was helpful, I don't know. I'm not very good at those kind of videos, and I'm not very good in tutorials. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy it, and until we see us again, stay safe.